And here in slide 18, this is uh, Bernini, Bernini's canopy where the Pope sits. Now, underneath uh, this, it's the representation of the Holy of Holies, blasphemously so. And in this representation, this would be uh, in the Holy of Holies where the Ark of the Covenant would sit. And uh, this is where uh, the Pope blasphemously portrays himself to be sitting there in the Holy of Holies. And in this next slide, number 19, you can see the close-up of the pedestals that are underneath this twisted column that are there uh, to represent uh, Solomon's temple. And this thing is huge. It's several stories high. I mean, this thing is huge. And there on, uh, on this pedestal, at the bottom of these twisted columns, in slide 20 here, we have the eight faces that are on the pedestals. And these eight faces are faces of women that are giving birth, women in childbirth. And I believe the obvious symbolism here, this is just like Pope Joan bringing forth her child. I believe that this symbolism represents the birth that will come and of the final one that's going to sit underneath this canopy. And all of this symbolism and all of this scripture, it tells us a consistent story. Now, one more thing I want to read for you uh, from a book entitled The Mysteries of Magic by Eliphas Levi. And this is kind of the grand crescendo. And he is the fella that did the wood carving of the Baphomet, which we showed you earlier. And he tells, he was a Catholic priest that got thrown out of the Catholic Church. And you got to be pretty bad to get thrown out of the Catholic Church, but he was. And he was a black magician, and he wrote the textbooks on black magic. And in this book, he talks about when he was in Paris, there was this fella that came in there by the name of Eugene Ventris. And to make a long story short, he had his priest robes on that had a phallic symbol on his head, and he performed a miraculous communion. And he not only performed a miraculous communion, but he imparted to Eliphas Levi the ability to perform this. I'll just read a little bit of here, just briefly. Um, okay. Where I want to read here. Okay. On page 456, it says, Thousands of hosts appear on altars where there were none. Wine sparkles in empty chalices, and it is no delusion. It is a wine, a delicious wine. Celestial music is heard. The fragrance of another world diffuses itself. And finally, blood, true human blood, which doctors have examined, exudes and sometimes flows copiously from the host, leaving mysterious characters thereon. And he goes on for several pages talking about the occult miracles this guy did and how this blasphemous mass, and this is the Luciferian mass that I believe will be performed underneath this canopy in the final go-round. Mm -hmm. And this is something all the way back, before we even studied any of this out, back in 2001, I believe, uh, Donna said she had a revelation from God. And always when someone says that, I'm going to try it no matter who it is. But she said she believed that the Lord revealed to her that the final worship of the false prophet was going to be a miraculous Luciferian mass 
where the wine would turn to real blood and the flesh would turn to real meat. And on our website, our new website, which Don and David Yoder worked so hard on, we have pictures there on our website of this actually happened. It happened in the Vatican with John Paul. It happens regularly. And this is something that has happened for a long time. And Eliphas Levi and other occult masters that are in this Luciferian priesthood, they perform this. This has been going on for a long, long time. Hi there, my name is Alan Lamont. I'm bringing more videos now on the Jesuit New World Order. We have a world conspiracy today. A world conspiracy. And this conspiracy is the beast system. It is the world government of the Vatican. The Pope today is the universal king of the world. He has supreme authority. 
He has supreme authority to rule in heaven and on earth. This is what the Jesuits teach. This is what they live by. And that all nations and all presidents and all governments must be obedient unto the Pope upon the pain of death. Understand this, that the rulers of the earth, they understand. There is no stopping this conspiracy. There is no removing this conspiracy. The Pope of Rome has authority. He exalts himself above all religions. The Jesuits of Rome have infiltrated every church, every organization, every government. They create the intelligence communities. They are the ones that depose of kings. That's the truth. Whatever the Pope decrees, it has to be obeyed. Whatever is commanded by the white Pope has to be obeyed. He is above Holy Scripture. He is above Islam. He is above every Christian denomination. And whoever does not submit to the Pope is cursed of God, for he is the judge of all the earth. This is what the Jesuits believe. This is what the Vatican really believes. You had the Council of Trent hundreds of years ago, and that was the Counter-Reformation. And they also brought in the Second Vatican Council to unite all Protestant churches under the power of Rome and bring all religions together. Because the Pope of Rome has sole authority. He has supreme power over the whole world in temporals, that is political power and spirituals. The Pope of Rome can depose an emperor, a king, a queen, whoever they are. It doesn't matter who they are. They have no power and no authority except by the Pope of Rome. The only authority they have is by subordination. Their dominions, their governments can be overthrown. If the Pope will depose of a king and his kingdom be given to another and the people will not receive that king or leader the pope may bring him in by force of arms the vatican today controls all of the armies of the earth the beast controls the armies of the earth and he is god on the earth ruled over by satan the vatican is the most murderous organization in history and it conceals this and it covers this up from the vast majority of the people on the earth hiding behind counterfeit Christianity when all they do day and night year after year decade after decade century after century is plot to overthrow governments any prince or any king who will not submit to the Pope they've been put to death any president any prime minister who has not been subordinate to the Pope and the Decrees of the Council of Trent, they've been put to death. All nations today are under obedience and submission to the Pope. So when people are going into the New World Order, this is the real conspiracy. All governments have made an alliance with Rome. All the Muslims, all the Jews, every government upon the earth, Israel, the Muslim Brotherhood, Washington, D.C., the British Crown, they're all under the power of Rome. All organisations are under the power of the Word of God. They're under the power of prophecy coming to pass. This is the truth. That's right. The ten kings are giving their kingdom unto the beast. There's nothing can stop the prophetic Word of God. Everything that's happening now in the nations of the earth is a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. The Lord says heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. That man of sin, that son of perdition, is riding forth today on his white horse, conquering and to conquer, conquering all nations through peace, but actually bringing warfare, ruling over high masonry. Understand that we have the Pope of Rome as the universal monarch of the world, but it's the Jesuit general who is the universal king. He is the Pope today, Pope Francis Bagaglo. He is the Jesuit superior general overthrowing the Protestant Reformation, ruling over all the Islamic nations, ruling over all the papal bloodlines, all the royal bloodlines, ultimately bringing all nations under the power of the Roman Catholic Church. And then the Black Pope will destroy the papacy. That's right. And then he will move his throne from the Vatican to the Temple Mount, controlling his... Jesuitized, Illuminized, Latin Kingdom of Jerusalem, Baal worshipping, High Masonic Jews that will build their third rebel order of the Knights Templar, Temple, Rebuilt Temple of Solomon, 
at the Temple Mount. Understand this, that actually what we're talking about in regard to the Third Jewish Temple is really the Knights Templars returning to their Temple Mount. That's who the Jesuits are. They're the Order of the Knights Templars, ruling over world Freemasonry, ruling over all nations. When the Jesuits were suppressed by Pope Clement, they really infiltrated Great Britain, protected by King George, and then you had the American Civil War. The Jesuits of Rome were working through the crown. They were all through working through America. They created that war in America, the Civil War, to create the Constitution, to end persecution against the Jesuits, so they could infiltrate America and build it up to be its right arm, its military arm, creating their intelligence op operations and agencies in America to then overthrow nation after nation after nation. And that's what the Jesuit general done, using the Federal Reserve and using America to fund communism, to fund Nazism and every ism across the planet. Jesuit general's agents really infiltrated the banking system, they in infiltrated every single government. That's why we had the Second Thirty Years War of 1914 and 1945, and the Jesuit order really installed uh, Stalin to be the Grand Inquisitor putting to death millions of Jews and Protestants and to bring Russia under the restoration of the Pope's temporal power under the cover of communism. Same with Catholic Benito Mussolini, another tool of the Jesuit order and Adolf Hitler and Bormann. Bormann was the real dictator of Germany. Everything is a lie. Even the nuclear war hoax, even the Cold War hoax of 1945 to 1989, it's all a lie. America today is ruled by the Jesuits of Rome because they are in control of the Council on Foreign Relations under the power of the high provincials from Jesuit universities. The most powerful being Jesuit Georgetown University. It's all a lie. All the wars in history are from the Jesuit general. Under his installed puppet dictators all across the world who secretly and openly are loyal to the Pope of Rome. Every war is planned. The Black Pope today, Pope Francis, he is the Jesuit general controlling today's international intelligence community in the East and the West and controlling his global terrorist network that he will use through Islam to destroy the Vatican and move his throne to the Temple Mount. The Jesuit general controls the world of finance, he controls the world of banking all across the planet. The Federal Reserve also, he controls it from the inner city corporation of London. We have a one world government today ruled over by the Black Pope. This is the world conspiracy. The Vatican is in control of the armies of the earth. They control China, they control Russia, they control all nations. This is the Holy Roman Empire of the Black Pope. Even ruling Jerusalem completely today and their Masonic Jewish Zionists who are preparing the way for the rebuilding of Solomon's Temple for the Black Pope who will be the final Papal Caesar. This is the truth. This is the truth. America will be destroyed by the Jesuits of Rome. This is what they will do. They will bring down the economy and they will invade America. They will destroy Rome at the same time. This is why President Kennedy was killed, of course. He defied Rome. He defied the Jesuits. And in his place was placed President Lyndon Johnson who was a traitor to the American people and the truth of the matter is whether people like to hear this or don't like to hear it the fact is you had many people that were pulling the strings you had Francis Cardinal Spellman uh, who was in control of the CIA but the truth of the matter is the real assassin was actually Jackie Kennedy later to become Jackie Onassis she was the one that killed Kennedy at Delight Plaza that's the truth no one would suspect that. 
It was a year before they brought the Zabruga film out to the American public. By that time, Oswald had been assassinated, Ruby had been poisoned, and they just brought all the misinformation and disinformation about Cuba and Russia and the Mafia. And by that time, people had been indoctrinated and mind-controlled into all that disinformation when, in fact, it was Jackie Kennedy, who was trained in Europe, in Paris, to be Pacific, and... Uh, she was trained by the CIA in many operations. She stayed with Onassis for a whole month before Dallas. And then after the murder went to marry Onassis, who was a high prince of Rome. He was an actual papal bloodline, very high papal bloodline. But, you see, this conspiracy is deeper than what people think. Of course, you have a structure. You have the black pope in control of his Jesuit provincials, they control the bishops and the bishops control the presidents. This is the truth. This is exactly the same with 9-11. Exactly the same structure. You know, Edward Cardinal Egan gave his command for that papal inquisition against the Twin Towers, of course, to justify, you know, an attack on the Middle East and against Islam, really. And when you look into it, you really have Jesuit trained CFR, CIA director, Knight of Malta, George G. Tennant, director of the CIA. And you have the high level Masonic Bush bloodline, uh, Bondsman from Yale. Also, they're actually, you know, the papal bloodline, but also of the House of Stuart. You have the Bin Laden family uh, financial dynasty tied together through the Carlisle Group. All connected through the Knights of Malta. They're all Vatican Knights. And these people should be really of course, brought to trial and put in prison for high treason. But that will never happen <laughs> in our lifetime. But they will stand before a greater judge. They will stand before Almighty God and give an account for their crimes against this world, against their oppression, tyranny. The black pope rules the earth. Everything you know in history is a lie. It's all a lie. It's being rewritten. True history is suppressed. It's covered up. Everything in the Bible it's been fulfilled today. Revelation 17 and 18 reveals that there's no hope. You must come out of Babylon the Great. You must come out of the beast system. And that means the vast majority of Protestant churches also. They are no longer part of the Reformation. They're in apostasy. They're under the power of the Vatican. That includes Anglicanism, Baptism, Methodism, every ism. The Methodist church is Romanized, Jesuitized, Illuminized, all under the power of Rome. Most of the Pentecostal churches are. So don't just think I'm talking about the Vatican, you know, controlling governments and controlling all religions. No, it's a worldwide conspiracy. Worldwide. That's right. And the Muslims will be used to destroy and attack Israel. But obviously they will be under the power of Russia, Gog and Magog through the Eurasian Union. That's the truth. The Vatican will use Islam to be its sword of inquisition, bringing about the destruction of Rome, the destruction of Mecca, Medina, and even the Jerusalem mosques and the Dome of the Rock. We're about to enter the Great Tribulation, and we have to lift up our voice and expose this great Jesuit world conspiracy. And the true murderers are our presidents, they are our prime ministers, they are our leaders. Those that we think we elect into office, they are our enemy. They are the true murderers. They are the ones that are bringing destruction across the face of the earth. And the greatest murderer today is Pope Francis. My name is Alan Lamont. Thank you for listening. And as always, all roads lead to Rome.
This is Mike with On Point Preparedness. Today, I have to share with you an incredible prophetic message that I believe was revealed directly to me by the Father. In this video, I will not only share with you the prophetic event that happened between Pope Francis and Donald Trump's May 24th meeting, but how God revealed its significant importance to me. As I write the words to this video, I am still marveling at the circumstances which led me to decipher this event. Many of you who have followed my works for the past year clearly understand that the prophetic chapters of the Bible irrefutably attribute the term Mystery Babylon to an anti-church of the end times, and that this church or false religion is led by the Vatican. It also states that there is a second beast, the beast of the earth, who subdues the world into worshiping the beast system, and that beast of the earth is the United States of America. If you are in disagreement with these concepts, or they are completely foreign to you, I have placed some of my most pivotal YouTube videos on this subject in the YouTube description box for your convenience. Ever since the events of September 23rd, 2015, where these two beasts came together for a historic event in which Pope Francis spoke to a joint session of Congress, I have followed the relationship of these entities in detail. Therefore, when Donald Trump took office, I took the position that Donald Trump was not a Christian savior appointed by the Lord, but the new head of the beast of the earth. But have you ever asked God for forgiveness? <laughs> I'm not sure I have. I just go and try and do a better job from there. I don't think so. I think I, if, I, if I do something wrong, I think I just try and make it right. I don't bring God into that picture. I don't. Now, when I take, you know, when we go and church and, and when I drink my little wine, which is about the only wine I drink, and have my little cracker, I guess that's a form of asking for forgiveness. And I do that as often as possible because I feel cleansed, okay? I stated on record in January 2017 that he and Pope Francis would come together, despite opposition from the mainstream media and many of my subscribers, who stated that the two were so diametrically opposed that they would not meet. And so, here we are on May 24th, 2017, where these two leaders have come together seeking common goals, that is, the unification of religions in the spirit of peace, solidarity, and combating extremism. All in all, their meeting lasted less than an hour, and on its surface, there was some symbolism that I had anticipated. That is, Trump and his family would submit to Pope Francis. Sure enough, they did so as Melania, Ivanka, and their aide all wore black veils and black dresses, which is a common practice of submission or respect amongst formal female visitors to the Vatican. This is in stark contrast to the fact that none of these women or any of the women in the Trump entourage wore any head covering at all during their visit to Saudi Arabia. However, the symbolism goes much, much deeper than this, and it is in regards to the gift that Donald Trump presented to Pope Francis. So what is this gift and what prophetic significance does it have? First, let me help you understand how God communicates with me and how he said that I must focus on Donald's gift. In running On Point Preparedness, I tirelessly research news articles, books, and even ancient texts. These activities, along with my full-time job, two children, and wife, prevent me from getting back to hobbies and the actual original founding purpose of On Point Preparedness, which was based on wilderness survival. Three days earlier, on May 21st, 2017, with what little free time I had, I picked up the following wild edible book from my collection of about 12 or so wild edible books. 
Each of these books is several hundred pages long and contain information about hundreds of different plants. I was only able to read a single section about one plant, which I had not researched before, and that is the North American lotus plant, known as the Nambo lutea. This event by itself is essentially meaningless. That is, until I recognized that one of the gifts that Donald Trump presented to Pope Francis was a bronze sculpture of the exact lotus species I was reading about three days earlier. Is it mere coincidence that of all the gifts that Donald Trump could present to Pope Francis, it would be one species of plant out of several thousands of species of plants? And that I, one who committed to his subscribers that this event would be prophetic and that I would be analyzing the symbolism, would have read about this very same species only three days earlier. So what is the important symbolism? The lotus is one of the most occult and ancient symbols of the natural world. And the fact that Donald Trump chose this sculpture, which was entitled Rising Above, is of grave concern. The lotus is the flower sacred to the Aryan Hindus, Egyptians, Buddhists, and more. References to it are found in the Egyptian Book of the Dead, the Jewish mystic religion of Kabbalism, and several other pagan religion texts and sculptures. For the occult, it represents the divine rebirth unto enlightenment, an abstract concept that is brought to life in the concrete or visible form of a lotus. It is, in essence, the same symbolism as the enlightenment of the all-seeing third eye. To name a few examples of its prevalence, you can see this in the occult film I Pet Go 2, where a lotus flower is seen blooming at the heels of then-President Obama. His face grows stark as he witnesses the reality of this transformative stage of enlightenment. In Egypt, you can see here the four sons of Horus being birthed out of the lotus flower. In Buddhism, Buddha is frequently attributed to holding the lotus, and the list goes on and on. The reason why the occult reveres this flower and its symbolism of rebirth unto enlightenment is best described by Helena P. Blavatsky who is the co-founder of the Theosophical Society, and she writes specifically on the lotus flower. For reference, the Theosophical Society shares ideology and partnership with the Lucius Trust, an organization that directly worships Lucifer and states that he is a misrepresented angel that sacrificed himself for the good of mankind. In her book, The Secret Doctrine, she references a passage from the Kabbalistic manuscripts, which states, Pointing to like signification was the lotus growing in the waters of the Nile. Its mode of growth peculiarly fitted it as a symbol of reproductive activities. The flower of the lotus, which is the bearer of the seed for reproduction, as the result of its maturing, is connected by its placenta-like attachment with Mother Earth, or the womb of Isis, through the water of the womb that is the River Nile, by means of the long cord-like stalk, the umbilicus. Nothing can be plainer than the symbol, and to make it perfect in its intended signification, a child is sometimes represented as seated in or issuing from the flower. You can now see how the occult viewed the flower as a symbol of rebirth as a child, or this rebirth into enlightenment, represented by a child coming out of the flower head. The Kabbalistic manuscript continues with the sexual and reproductive symbolism of the lotus. It states the locality of the womb is to be taken as the most holy place, the sanctum sanctorum and the veritable temple of the living God. 
This falls in line with all occult practices as they practice sex magic and literally worship the female body. She also makes note of the lotus from the ancient Egyptian ritual Book of the Dead, which has a section entitled Transformation into the Lotus. It states, a head emerging from this flower. The god exclaims, I am the pure lotus, emerging from the luminous one. I carry the message of Horus. I am the pure lotus which comes from the solar fields. So, I believe that the Antichrist spirit was definitely at work in this meeting. Any multitude of gifts could have been given to Pope Francis. Books, medallions, sentimental items, other pieces of art, etc. But out of these multitudes, Donald Trump chose the Lotus. As the Egyptian Book of the Dead states, is Donald affirming that he carries the message or gift of Horus, an enlightened message essentially from Lucifer? I guess that is up for you to decide. Hi guys, this is Ed and welcome to The Outer Dark. Recently I was doing some research and I found a number of very strange things regarding the symbolism at the Pope's audience hall at the Vatican and I found it really disturbing. In fact, there was one detail that really did blow my mind. Anyway, stay tuned as The Outer Dark brings you five dark things about Paul IV's audience hall. Number five, first some context. I am a Christian and I was baptized and at one stage I was even an altar boy. I'm not knocking the Catholic faith or anything like that, but it is my duty to follow the breadcrumbs, no matter where they go, even if I don't like what I find. Anyway, what is the audience hall in question? Well, it's a building in the Vatican where the Pope himself holds audience. It's named after Pope Paul IV and has a seating capacity of 6,300. It's designed in reinforced concrete by an Italian architect and was completed in 1971. The architect in question is noted for building large reinforced concrete structures, the kind that's very strong and is the public equivalent of a super bunker. Number four, I will be covering the audience hall in depth in a moment and what very well blew my mind about it. But until then, I want to go over something else. That is the major feature behind the Pope that features inside the audience hall, namely this. Have you seen this before? I'd never seen it before myself and felt like I had entered the realm of the Mandela effect once again, on overload this time, since this is the most ominous thing I've ever seen in a while. This artwork was placed within the hall in 1977, as history states, and depicts according to the Vatican, the resurrection of Christ emerging from a nuclear apocalypse. Now think to yourself for a moment. The audience hall is a reinforced concrete bunker and the depiction of Christ shares the same connections with Christ himself rising from an atomic apocalypse. Not only that, but many people have said this is the most unchristian thing they have ever seen in a long time. Even a number of Catholics I've talked to. For it looks like Christ's head is in fact missing. At least half of it. A number of Catholics don't even remember even seeing this before or looking at it. But it's been in the hall since, at least according to history, since 1977. The structure seems to have entered at least the internet's consciousness around 2012. I could find a couple of examples before that, but most seem to be post-2012, and there doesn't seem to be any pictures of it from the front, or seem to be taken from the side. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that because I found it really disturbing. Number three, in order to understand what I'm going to show you about the audience hall, that is the following symbolism around the architecture. You have to understand a number of course conspiracies, most notably the work of researcher David Icke, at least the main theories he puts forward, for he states that there is an idea that the elites themselves rule through a secret bloodline within the global elite and that there is an overriding superstructure of well alien influence most notably reptilian number two i want to have a look very carefully at the inner architecture of the audience hall i want you to look very carefully at this piece this part of the architecture and really just look at it now it's a circular eye-like architecture and you can see there is a almost a slit in it it almost looks reptilian 
Well, is your mind blowing yet? Probably not. You're probably laughing at me. Well, sorry, maybe I should take the photo from a different position. How about here? Now can you see it? This view is from the back of the hall. A view largely never taken, I might add, in any form. Maybe because if you see it on the front view, you can see this. Let me go through this in detail so you can see what I'm talking about. First the eyes. Take a look. Now the scaly skin. Now the sharp teeth. Also note the pathway to the Pope himself and the fact that it resembles a snake's tongue or an even a snake's tail. Now ask yourself this. Why is there a massive snake symbolism within the inner audience chamber of the Pope? Also note the architect who designed it. This project would have cost millions of dollars. And every design, everything you can think of, it's the job for the architect to entertain. They just don't design anything like this unless there is a reason behind it. So what is the snake a symbol of? Well, ask yourself that. What is the snake a symbol of within Christianity? Number one. So what does this mean? Well, perhaps we need to go back to David Icke again. Let's go through David Icke's main hypothesis again. David Icke states that there's a global conspiracy where our very world has been ruled by reptilian aliens, that they rule this through control over bloodlines and vast amounts of other methods and resources. He states that the elites are not like us. They look like us, they act like us, but they're not like us. They are fundamentally different. They think different. And most importantly, they have different wants and needs, different desires. But at the end of the day, I'm just presenting what I find. It does not mean I'm right. Go out and do your own research form your own conclusions and come to your own opinions. These are the just the dots I connect. I'm just an armchair researcher.